Trout fishing in winter can be a real challenge, especially when targeting the larger carp. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you're left scratching your head. However, if you get it right, occasionally the results can be mind-blowing. Absolutely blown away. This is the reason we came to Swan Valley. We've had this absolute unit. Right, so it's the middle of January and I'm just sat on my drive warming my car up. Uh, it's pretty cold out there, it's about six degrees and I've been seeing online lots of lakes are frozen. So I'm not even sure what's going to happen when I get to the lake. But um, I'm going to Swan Valley, which is really exciting. A lake I went to last spring and I managed a couple of 40 pounders and there's quite a few 40 pounders in there. Um, but we are in January now, so it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, not the easiest of lakes at the best of times, um, but it is throwing up the odd fish here and there. And yeah, I'm gonna head there to have three nights of fishing, try and catch myself a winter carp and my first carp of the year. I've not really had a chance to get out on the bank yet this year. So yeah, my first venue of the year is gonna be Swan Valley. Um, and hopefully we'll get a chance to catch one of the mythical beasts that lives in there. So I'm gonna be taking you through all of my tactics and things uh, for winter carp fishing, showing you my rig and my bait mix and everything like that, and talking a little bit about watercraft and things. So if we're not successful, at least you can learn something from the video. So I'm just gonna let my car warm up and then get on the road. I actually live on the Isle of Wight, so it's a bit of a trek for me. I've got to drive to the ferry, jump on the ferry, which takes about an hour, and then drive up from Southampton to Swan Valley, which is in Yateley, uh, which is about another hour from Southampton. So all in all, my journey's about two and a half, nearly three hours to get there, but then I've got three nights, so it's worth the journey. So yeah, let's get on the road and hopefully we'll have a fish or two. guys we have finally settled on a swim it's called swim 10 mr big fish which hopefully is a good omen for this session i'll talk to you tomorrow about why i've chosen this swim and this area of the lake and i'll also show you my rig and my bait and my tactics and everything but for now the light is rapidly going as you can see behind me I'm running out of time uh, to get the rods out so i need to crack on and uh, tomorrow i'll talk to you a bit more about the tactics and uh, 
show you a bit more about what we're doing. So yeah, I better get on and I will keep you updated as things happen. Right then, good morning, and here we are at the marvellous Swan Valley Fishery in Yateley. Um, as you saw, I arrived yesterday and it was pretty much dark before I had a chance to get the rods out. It's quite, um, quite weedy still and uh, it's quite hard to find any spots and I hadn't really seen any fish showing or anything like that, but um, I was chatting to one of the bailiffs who was walking around with his dog and he told me sort of this area, which is Swim 10, I believe it is, uh, Mr. Big Fish, it says on the front of the platform. I think it used to be Swim 17 when the lake was a syndicate before, but they've sort of renumbered all the swims now. Um, but yeah, he told me that this sort of area, the fish have been sort of sitting in the weed out in the open water and things like that. So I thought I'd go here and uh, and see what happens at least for the night and I can kind of watch the water and if I see or hear anything I can always move but I haven't actually seen or heard anything the whole time um, since I got here yesterday afternoon so I'm just going to kind of stick with it for now until I kind of have something to go on but I did have a couple of liners on the middle rod this morning so basically I'm fishing in this like little channel which is, it, it goes into what they call the back bay I think so I'm in the main lake, but it's the sort of pinch point between the two bits of the lake where the fish can move through. And um, there's a snaggy tree line on the far side, which looks good for a bite. So I've got one rod over, my left hand rod's over towards a sort of a snag that's in the water there. Um, but then I've found a nice clear gravelly spot about two thirds of the way across from a middle rod. Um, and it's it's not that far away from the um, the snaggy tree line, but. It's, it's dropping down into slightly deeper water and it's nice and clear there as well because it's quite weedy kind of either side of it. So I figured that'd be good. That's a sort of patrol route coming in and out of that back bay. So yeah, I've got that middle rod on that sort of um, gravelly bar that I've found, which is kind of a patrol route from the back bay. And then my right hand rod is just going to the marginal trees to the right of the swim. Um, I remember when they drained the lake, I was actually here for the netting last year before it turned into a day ticket lake and um, I remember the margins here are quite nice and gravelly and clear and they sort of shelved down quite quick and then there's near the sort of tree there there's a nice sort of um, almost a flat spot which uh, I think just be a perfect place if the fish are sat under them trees put a little bit of bait there and just um, hope that they kind of smell it and come and investigate so anyway I've got my coffee on I'm just going to be sitting watching the water this morning having a bacon sandwich in a minute which I'm quite excited about and uh, and then I'm going to take you through my tactics you know my rigs and my bait mix and everything um, and yeah I'll, I'll see what happens it's it's not looking good it's not been fishing well apparently and I haven't really seen anything show so it's it's really tricky um, but there are a lot of big fish in here and there's always chance while the rods are in the water so we've just got to do the best we can and see what happens. Right then, so tactics wise on this session, we are in winter as I said, so I've not gone crazy with the bait or anything. I'm basically just fishing um, a little wafter. So this is my rig here. Um, it just consists of a, a trimmed down Vitamino wafter to make like a little dumbbell shape and uh, just sinks just nicely under the weight of the hook and then just uh, sits on top of the hook like that. And the rig itself is a combi slip D rig. So basically I've just got some supple braid tied slip D style and then I've attached it combi style to some uh, fluorocarbon material. And then I've got a blob of putty in the middle there just to pin it down but also it helps drop the hook. That sort of stiff material, if you have weight in the middle it kind of pulls down on the hook as the fish picks it up 
and um, just helps hook in potential really and it's a really good rig it turns really well and uh, the fluorocarbon is um, you know fairly invisible so it's quite subtle as well they can't really see it and that is just being cast out with a little PVA bag um, so I'll show you the mix in a second that goes in the PVA bag um, and then yeah I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about a plan I think I might be moving swim so I'll talk to you about that as well so for bait on this session guys I've just got a mix of pellets there so I've got some low oil amino ester pellets and some micro amino pellets in there and then I've mixed that in with some of the pure marine extract which has made them go that more darker colour um, and they're super attractive but also low oil because it's winter you don't want to be using oily kind of fish meal pellets because the oil congeals and the attraction doesn't come out of them but also more importantly the fish can't digest them very well but um, using low oil pellets like this and then getting some natural liquids in there just uh, leaks out onto the lake bed and attracts the fish without feeding them too much so I'm putting that out in my little bags and also some of the vitamino boilies I'm just crumbing up into sort of halves and quarters and a bit of dust as well and just adding that to the bag as well so that along with those little black vitamino wafters um, is very subtle I think the fish on here are quite pressured they've been fished for for a long long time they've seen it all before and I think bright baits can be a bit blatant I've done well on black baits on here before and they just kind of blend in and the fish are, are pulled in by the attraction but they're not alarmed by something bright on the bottom that isn't natural to them so that's what I'm using um, just a few boilies crumbed up and a few pellets in a little bag and that is literally it you know I'm not putting any free bait out at all because we are in the winter I don't think the fish are particularly feeding heavily there's not a lot been caught lately so we're just trying to nick a bite and find where the fish are so I've got my lines pretty tight I'm uh, looking for liners and I did have a couple of liners on my middle rod so you know I'm not far from the fish but um, there's not been that much activity here so I am considering a move and I'll talk to you about that a little bit later on. Right, good morning guys. Uh, you might be able to tell from the scene behind me that we are now in a different swim. Um, first light this morning, you know, still nothing happened. It was just looking uh, dead in the swim where I was and I, I didn't really have a view of the open water of the middle of the lake, which is kind of out behind me here. Uh, and I'm sure on the first night I saw a couple of fish moving. It could have been birds, I don't know, there's a lot of tufties and stuff, but um, yeah, there's a lot of weed out there and the bailiffs have said that they think the fish are sitting in the weed at the moment. Uh, yesterday evening I had a little marker rod around and I think I felt a fish as I was dragging back through the weed. Suddenly there was a bump on the rod and uh, I think I might have gone over a fish's back or something. Um, and I sort of uh, stopped the, the rod there and clipped it up and when I cast again there was a nice sort of gravelly spot there. So. I've, um, I've moved this morning at first light, just you know, as it was light enough to see what I was doing. I've not got any rods in the water at the moment, they're all lent up against the bivvy there. So um, yeah, I need to get, get sorted, get the rods back out and I'll, um, I'll catch you up to date once, uh, once that's all done. Right then, I've only just moved swims about an hour ago, got the rods out and one of the rods is gone. So it just shows you in the winter, if you're not on the fish, you can't catch them. And that move has definitely paid off. 
got my first carp of the year and wait till you see it. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, look at that. It's 27 pounds of the Aitley mirror. Beautiful linear scales on it. Really dark colours. I'll just flip it around and show you the other side. Oh, there we go. That's 27 pounds. Beautiful linear from Swan Valley. So I'll get it back and I'll talk you through the tactics and uh, yeah, hopefully there's time for more. Come on. Hey guys, we have had some utter carnage. I was um, just about to tell you about um, my tactics and everything, how I caught that last fish. And uh, one of the other rods has gone, and unfortunately I lost that fish. Uh, I was getting that rig ready to go back out, and then another rod has gone, and it's wiped out one of my rods, um, but I've managed to land one. So I've got one in the net down there, and I've only got one rod fishing at the moment. So I'm gonna try and get the rods back out, and then I'll show you the fish. And then I'll tell you the tactics. All right, happy days. Absolutely blown away. This is the reason we came to Swan Valley. It's well known, there's a lot of big fish in this lake. And I always thought it was going to be a bit of a challenge in the winter, but after moving swims this morning, I managed to uh, those couple of fish that we saw. And now we've had this absolute unit. Oh, there we go, 40 pound, two ounces. Absolutely blown away. I've not even had a chance to tell you my tactics or anything yet. It's been a mental day. But yeah, I'll get this back and um, I'll try and talk you through the rig and everything and how we caught it. Well happy. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, my back. Right guys, I have to apologise for the slight lack of filming today. It's been pretty manic to be honest, since I moved swims first thing this morning, had that take, then I had another take and lost it, you know, and I had another fish after that which you saw. Then I've been sort of tying rigs up and this sort of thing. A few people have come round to chat and, uh, you know, sort of enjoy the buzz with me and that sort of thing. So I've not had a lot of time to get the camera out really. And then I've just had that absolutely insane 40 pounder, which I cannot believe, you know, in, in January, it's just mega. I mean, a 40 pounder at any time of year is awesome, but to come here for a couple of nights and um, finally found the fish after moving swims. And then, you know, I've had like four or five takes today and managed to land three of them. So it has been pretty intense. And then to cap it off with that 40 pounder is just mega, you know, it's a, a dream come true really. So. I thought I'd better just uh, give you an update on uh, what I've been doing. So where I thought I was seeing the fish show last night or the night before, I think it was, I came round with a marker rod and just chucked it out in that general area. And as I was dragging back along the bottom, I actually felt a fish, you know, I sort of got that knock on the rod tip. And I was like, right, that is the spot there. And it was a bit smooth anyway, nice and gravelly. So I marked that up and then I wrapped it around my sticks so when I moved into here this morning, I had that spot already kind of wrapped up. So I just um, put bags out there really. And um, that's what's 
been doing the fish, you know, just those little black wafters, those vitamino wafters that I showed you on that little slip D rig, the combi slip D rig. Um, and yeah, just a little bag of the uh, the mix, the sort of crumb and the pellets and everything. And that's it, you know, and I think it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Just find the fish and, uh, and give them a little bit of bait, but not too much in the winter. And you can catch multiple fish like I have on this, on this session. It's all come good in the last 24 hours and I've still got tonight to go. So who knows what's going to happen. I've got one rod out at the moment. I've got two that I need to sort out and get back out in the lake because that, that 40 pounder wiped them out. It was uh, really, really, really hard to get that fish in. It was just staying deep in all the weed and then it went through my other lines because they were sort of sat on top of the weed, you know, and there's not a lot you can do in that situation. I just had to let them get more and more tangled up. Finally, finally got it in the net, really, really tricky. And then I had to untangle it all whilst the fish was in the net. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've got two rods to sort out now. I managed to get one back out already, uh, just on, on the sort of kill zone, if you like. So yeah, there's, um, there is chance of another fish before it gets dark. And I need to get my other rods out before that so I can see where I'm casting. So yeah, I better uh, stop talking, get the rods back out. And hopefully there's time for another one before we leave tomorrow morning. We're leaving quite early because I've got a meeting to go to and then I'm going on to another session which will be another video so make sure you subscribe to the ProLogic channel so you don't miss that next video. Going to a lovely little lake in Hampshire, good for a winter bite as well on there so good chance for a few fish in that video as well so subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up as well guys and uh, any comments or questions leave them down below and um, we'll do our best to get back to you so yeah hope you're enjoying it so far guys going to get back to the fishing, try and get these rods out nicely before dark and then uh, yeah we'll see what the last night brings. Right then good morning guys, another cold one last night, it wasn't minus temperatures but there was definitely a bit of a chill in the air, there was a bit of a northwesterly blowing and it made it pretty chilly. So, uh, yeah, I was tucked up in a sleeping bag most of the night. But um, I was kind of watching the water and listening, and there was a couple of shows. Um, and also, I did lose a fish at about 2 a.m., so definitely still some fish in the area. I've got it about losing one, and I've lost a couple on this session. I think partly down to the weed, the, um, there's a lot of sort of dead and dying weed beds in here. Uh, in the summer the weed's quite, you know, it's quite high, it's quite up to the surface and uh, prolific but it is sort of dying back and I think if you hook a fish and it goes straight into weed or if you go through weed, you, you haven't got direct contact to the fish to sort of keep uh, a straight line to it and you can get hook poles like that, if the, you know, if you've not sort of got the tight line to the fish and I think that's what happened really, I picked it up, felt a couple of nods uh, the fish was definitely on there and then and then it came off unfortunately so I was a bit gutted about that but got the rod out nicely because I'd, I'd wrapped up and uh, got back to the same spot um, and then after that I did see a couple of shows as well so the recast didn't spook the fish away so they are in the area um, and yeah we're just holding on now for the next uh, few hours until the end of the session it was around this time yesterday when I had that flurry of action, you know, the first couple of bites came in the late morning period, so I am kind of uh, going to try and string it out a little bit on this session and see if I can just winkle one more out before we go, because on Swan Valley you've always got a chance of a 40 pounder. I think there's, there's something like 12 40s swimming around in this lake and um, the next bite could be another 40 pounder, so, you know, it's not the sort of place where you want to cut your session short, especially if you're on fish and you've caught a couple, so yeah we're going to be holding on seeing what happens and um, hopefully we can we can winkle one more out before we go i'm going off to another venue after this to film a second video so um as i said keep an eye on the prologic channel for that video as well a bit more of a productive water that one but the rules there are uh, quite different so you have to use um, mono rigs and uh, barbless hooks and things so I'll be talking you through my tactics to sort of get around that as well and showing you my rig for that 
venue. So um, make sure you look out for that video coming as well. And um, yeah, for now, just going to be keeping an eye on the water and hoping that one of these rods is going to go before I have to leave. Right then guys, so I've already started the laborious task of packing away. No one likes doing that after a session, do they? But it's a little bit easier this time around because I've had a really good session down here. Managed those three fish and a couple of losses as well. So I was definitely on the fish and I was definitely doing something right, but uh, unfortunately lost a couple, but sometimes that's just the way with weedy waters. And particularly in the winter, when the fish aren't feeding that strongly, you sometimes don't get good hook holds. So maybe a slightly shorter rig next time I come or something like that, just to make sure I hook the fish properly. But, um, you know, to have a 40 pounder in January, I'm more than happy with that. And a couple of backup fish, including that stunning linear that was my first fish of the year. So I'm really happy with that as well to get off the mark for 2022. And I am now packing up and going on to another water, as I said. So make sure you keep an eye out for that video as well. And I hope there's been some tips and tactics in this video that might help you in your winter fishing. Um, the main takeaway point, I think, is just to make sure you're on the fish, you know, basic rigs and bait and everything, keep it simple, but just find the fish. It's the most important thing, really. And, um, you know, if you're not on them, you can't catch them, as this session proved, you know, two nights next door, and then I moved into this swim and had a fish within an hour, and then, you know, had a flurry of takes throughout that day. And it just shows you, you know, once you get your location right, it can be quite easy. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the ProLogic channel. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.